Hello everyone, so now that we understand intermolecular forces, we can now compare boiling points of different molecules. So let's compare the boiling point of water and methane, which is CH4. Now here's where students get confused. They will go draw water like this, which is perfectly fine. They'll then draw methane, and then they'll look at the intermolecular force between them. That is not the way that these questions work. We need to look at each one separately. So let's start with water. So we know by now that water is drawn like this. But if you are boiling water, then all that you have in your container is water. It's not a mixture of water and methane. If you're boiling water, then that's all that you have. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw methane. So we know how to do this. We've done these in previous lessons. Now we need to analyze the intermolecular forces. Because if you want to boil water, you don't break these bonds. Remember, because this is covalent. How do I know it's covalent? First of all, it's two nonmetals. Second of all, We've looked at the electronegativity difference in previous lessons, and we've seen that it's less than 2.1. So this is covalent. And so when you boil this molecule, you're going to separate the water molecules from each other. Because if you were to break these intramolecular bonds, then you would literally see hydrogen and oxygen whenever you boiled water. However, when you boil water, it's still going to be H2O that gets given off. It just goes into the gas phase. And so remember, there are six different types of intermolecular forces. There was the dipole-dipole, dipole-induced dipole, London, iron dipole, iron-induced dipole, and then also hydrogen bonding. So if we look at this, we can see that water, we've seen in previous lessons that the electronegativity is highest on oxygen. And so we can see that those arrows don't cancel. And so this molecule is not balanced, and so it's polar. And so this one's obviously also polar. And so between two polars, we would usually say dipole, dipole. But then we said we should always remember that if you have hydrogen bonded with either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, then we will rather call it hydrogen bonding. And here we do have hydrogen bonded with oxygen. However, that is not the hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bond is the intermolecular force. And so what we can say is that water is going to have hydrogen bonding. Now we need to move over to the right hand side and look at methane. Now we know from our electronegativities that the arrow is going to go towards carbon. But can you see that those arrows would all cancel out? Because it looks like this, like this, like this, and like that. And when those arrows cancel out, then the molecule is balanced. And that's nonpolar. Remember, polar bears are not balanced. And so when you have a polar molecule, or when your molecule is not balanced, then we call it polar. But when your molecule is balanced, we call it nonpolar. And so this one over here is also going to be nonpolar. And so remember, when you have two nonpolar molecules, that force in between them is called a London force. Very, very weak. And so now we can compare. Water, if you want to take a pot of water and separate the water molecules from each other, you are going to have to break hydrogen bonds. If you want to boil methane, you are going to have to break London forces. And so which one is going to be more difficult to do? Well, well done if you said water, because to break, or sorry, not break, but to overcome the hydrogen bonds, you are going to need more energy. Why? Because they are stronger. And so which one do you think would have a higher boiling point? Well, that would be water, because you're going to have to heat up the stove to 100 degrees in order to have enough energy so that these forces can be overcome and so the water molecules can move off into the gas phase. To break this force over here, you don't need a lot of energy because the force is not very strong and so your temperature does not have to be very high. And so just once again, let's say that this, these water molecules are in the liquid phase, and so they have this hydrogen bonding force between them, and that force is quite strong. 
if you want to turn these water molecules, if you want to get them into the gas phase, then you have to separate them. Because if they are stuck together like this, then they're either going to be solid like ice or they're going to be liquid water. To turn them into the gas phase, you're going to have to separate them. So we're going to have to overcome this force, overcome this force, overcome that and overcome that. So that the individual water molecules can then go off into a gas phase and they don't have to be stuck to each other. But hydrogen bonding, we said, is relatively strong. And so you're going to need quite a bit of energy to overcome that force. And that energy is going to be in the form of high temperatures. We're going to need to heat it up quite a bit so that these water molecules can vibrate very quickly and so they can overcome these large forces, which we call hydrogen bonding. Now with methane or CH4, there's also these intermolecular forces between them. So if we want to turn this into a gas, you are going to have to overcome. Notice how I don't say break because there's nothing to break. You want to overcome these forces, but luckily these are London forces because they are between two nonpolar molecules and London forces are very weak. So it will be very easy for you to break these and so your temperature does not have to be very high. And so methane or CH4 will have a lower boiling point than water. Thank you for watching.